starting with the overall structure, what is it? Cylinder. A big cylinder, yeah. So you have a cylinder, right? And to get cylinders to work, right, you have a central axis, the outer points, and the ellipse for top and bottom, right? And to check yourself, you can put a line through the ellipse at the outer points, and this should be a 90 degree angle, right? If that angle isn't 90 degrees, then you're in trouble, because um, it'll look like the ellipse is bending. So common error is this one, where the axis goes like that. Makes sense. Can you guys see that? Yeah, so I'll draw that one a little darker. So you see that all the time. That's a little exaggerated, but um, it's just because, you know, you you uh, haven't gotten into like checking yourself. Um, the other topic for today is actually how to measure, right? So if you have that overall cylinder, you can figure out how tall uh, it is versus how wide it is. So the way you do that is you stand in a consistent spot, um, you know, in the spot that you're going to draw, and you stick your arm out at arm's length, and you line up the pencil tip on one edge and use your thumb to mark the other while shutting one eye. And that gives you a width, and that gives you one unit to measure by. So I know that one unit of width hits right in the center of the hourglass. So at least visually speaking, because it's tilted, it's, you know, exactly, it divides in, in half exactly. So I'm pretty close just by eyeballing it. Uh, so I can stick with that, right? So now, but I don't, what I don't want to do is measure first and then try to draw that out, right? You could do this, pick marks in half and then, you know, draw that width out and so on. That would be more of a classical approach, but this is analytical, right? So for measuring to work, you put down a guess, then you check it. If you're uh, navigating with a sextant and you're at sea, you take a guess at your exact latitude and longitude and measure the angle of the sun against that guess, right? And how much you're off is how you is the number number that you use to correct. Right? So same way, we make a guess and then we correct it, right? Now the overall. Uh, shape here has uh, these little conical things. So you can actually use a cone and then cut off the cone to get this overall cone structure, right? Make sense? Okay. Another way to do it is if you have your cylinder, then you can take and just do another smaller ellipse, right? Approximating where that cone is, and then add in the diagonals like that. That's fine too. Okay. It just depends. The trick is to have variety so that you so that if you need it, you can do it. What's the other structure? <clears throat> There's a pole in the back. There's another one too. What structure do the three poles make up? Triangle. Yeah, they make a triangular prism, right? So you have to know how to do that structure. So you have a triangular prism. It goes down. So you have to be able to do a triangular prism. And there's really only one way to do that. Um, and that's that way. And then each one of these poles is a cylinder in itself. So they have to come down with their own ellipses, right? So 
So pretty complex. But if you can see the overall, then that's what really what we're going for. Um, now the way these mix is even more complicated. So you have to have your cylinder, right? And then you have to be able to inscribe the uh, triangular pyramid within it. Or the triangular prism, right? So that in and of itself is pretty difficult. So when you're working up this object, you can practice just two of these elements interacting, right? And then you can go in and you can add in the cone structures and all that if you want to start making it more accurate to the actual thing. And then the third, the third major structure is what? Servals. Yeah, yeah, the actual like glass part of the hourglass, right? And that, so that, what's that? What would that be? Teardrops. They look kind of teardrop shaped, but we don't have like a ready-made structure that's a teardrop, right? Yeah, so you, you could do it with a sphere, right? So you could say, well, that's a sphere, and then that's a sphere down there, and then they can kind of cross. And that would give you your overall hourglass form, right? So would you have to do those two cones you did in the beginning? For this? Good. So the other way to make this look like a, an actual form is to just draw some hemisphere lines around it, right? Because you have the actual sand in the bottom, and that will be on that ellipse, right? So the sand gives another indicator of the form. What so was the reasoning that. of putting the cones in the top? Line? Because the the top and bottom are conical shaped, got a, the steel bits. Just completing, oh, the, I get completing it. the cone, yeah. I get it. So, how else could you break that down? The glass. Pyramid? Pyramid? It's kind of a sphere. Well, you use spheres. You do another cylinder. Just do a cone on top of the sphere. You do, yeah, you could do a cylinder and you could do another like cone and sphere combo, right? So if you did a cylinder, you wouldn't take it all the way to the top, you'd take it here, right? A squat cylinder, and then you take two half, like half spheres, right? You could take a small cylinder down the center, and that would actually give you your, your top and bottom points, right? which are kind of important. And then you could kind of connect those together. However you see that happening. Then you could also take, uh, your idea would, would be, you take your two spheres and your, and your cones. And in this case, you would make them cross. So the point of the cones would go through each other. Right. So yeah, that's a pretty good way. And then you can just sort of evolve them to be a little more accurate to what's there. And then drawing two people, what else do you have that drove you crazy yesterday? Eggs. No. Eggs, right? You can take, because uh, you have a, a kind of a teardrop form, you can take your ideal egg form if you're used to drawing that. Invert two of them. And start to connect them.
and I can give you another option of how to do this. So there's like a million different ways to do each part of this. And then, you know, we'll take this initial one. And then now that you have this, you can get them all interacting, right? Make things connect. The tricky part is the uh, the um, actual hourglass sticks out from this. Uh, like sticks past the poles. Yeah, it sticks past the poles. Um, anyway, I don't mind if it's proportionally off. Uh, so much as you're analyzing what's going on with the structures. So if I can see that you're thinking through this process, that's more of what I want.